If it works, the end of the race, we'll get you loaded up, put on more speed. The same time, kick is our quarterback, our lead, our ball game. All obstacles are blocked, cut aside, two of the games after this win it in. We're going to shoot again, and we're here for the first man. Can't block you, you never six minutes. Rocky Town! <laughs> I know everybody thinks it's cliche, but you know, I truly believe in my heart, you know, that we all are blessed just to have the opportunity to be at the University of Tennessee. You know, we have, you know, we've had some guys in the past that always felt like Tennessee was blessed to have us. You know, and, and that's not the case, you know. So these guys, I think they're believing in what we're doing, how we're doing things, that they understand is bigger than us as individuals. It's bigger than me as Coach G. It's bigger than Coach Banks. It's bigger than Coach Eck. You know, it's bigger than any one of them. You know, it begins with the T and ends with the T. 99% like of the people in this world want to be great. Would you agree with that? Yeah, they're called wannabes. 1% work to be great. Drop the mic on that. <laughs> you know, I, I know what I came here to do, and um, you know, it's my job to go and uh, get that done. Yeah, you know, again, I, I think we, we, we should really have the best defensive line in the country. You know, I feel really good about our depth that we're building. Um, I feel really strongly about, you know, their attitude and the determination that those guys have played with. You know, and again, I'm not even talking as much about football, just great guys. You know, they're great human beings and, you know, they've really worked hard. And, you know, as coaches, we want to see guys develop and reach their full potential. Um, Tony Swanson says, SJD, will you ever go back on the Talking Vols network? Ooh, I like Talking Vols. I think that's Boogie Bentley running the show over there, man. That's a, he's, he's awesome at what he does. We actually were trying to get on his show during their stream for charity ended up not happening just by nature of the schedules conflicting. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We'll make that happen here in the near future. Boogie does an awesome job and they do, they do an awesome job over there on that platform. So yeah, without question, without cool. question. To be the man, you got to beat the man. And I'm saying, woo, right here. Welcome to the Dog and Balls Network. My name's Boogie Bentley. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday evening. Hope you're having a better Wednesday evening than Dauber. Uh, you guys always blame me when we're late. Da Dauber having a rough go of it, man. Picked up some new, a new router, a new modem. He jumps on, having trouble, uh, and then he bailed. So hopefully Dauber can get it straightened out as we move forward. But man, I'm excited, boys. We got we got a busy freaking week coming up right here, right here. On the Talking Balls Network, of course, the Orange and White game coming up on Saturday. We're going to be hanging out. G10 Parking Garage, I think. 
at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Come by, hang out. I'll tweet out, let you guys know where we're at. Also, Talking Balls live on Sunday night. We're calling an audible, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be recapping the orange and white game. Myself, Coach Jay, Coach Rice, hopefully Dauber, but also we're going to be joined at the top of the show by a special guest, four-star offensive tackle, Jalen Matthews, going to be in the house. He's going to be recapping his visit. He's going to be in town for the orange and white game. Talking to him, guys, he's like, you going to be at the game, man? Can we, uh, can we like get together? I'm like, bro, I'm going to be with the people. I'm a man of the people. I'm going to be out in the parking lot having some frosty beverages. We will catch up after the visit. Told Jamal Wallace the same thing. He's going to be here on Wednesday. Also going to be in town on Rocky Top for the Orange and White game. Going to come on, hang out Wednesday night. Maybe we do a fan call-in show Wednesday night. We'll see. But tons of fun stuff coming your way. Coach Jay, Coach Rice in the house. Coach we only get a limit. I say coach. You're both coach. I was coach like, Jay. I'm confused. <laughs> coach Jay, we only get a limited time. We get four weeks of spring camp. It's coming to a close uh, on Saturday. What do you think of this you, going into year four, Josh Heupel, with spring camp? Exciting stuff, man. Exciting stuff. We talked about it last week. Uh, you know, gearing up. It's a game week this week, so you're kind of honing everything in. I was really encouraged to see at least early on in the practice cycle this week. They've been – getting back to basics, right? You've been seeing a lot of uh, linebacker drills. We've, we've read about and heard about them, uh, you know, working on fall steps, right? Working on run recognition, read steps. These are the little things that got us crossed up. We talked about it last week, how, you know, there were a lot of plays where our linebackers were getting fooled on their read steps. And then lo and behold, what are they working on, right? Their read steps. It was almost like it was right on cue, man. So that's, that's always good to hear, man. There's always time for fundamental work and practice. And I think that can get lost in the college level and definitely in the pro level as well. But there's nothing wrong with going back to basics, man. It's the foundation for everything you do. And um, look, if you waste a step in this conference, you're going to get smoked, man. There are some burners all over this conference. You, you can't be wasting steps. Uh, if you forget about taking a false step, right? If you take a read step on a run play, that's not a play action, then you're two steps behind the pattern already. Right. And it, it that yeah. that's a death sentence, right? So they need to get that worked on and they are working on it. It's awesome. Uh, Nico's man, every little clip you see of him, right. He's out there throwing dimes. He looks smooth. Darts. Uh, right. Darts, just, just absolute darts. Right. Uh, Throwing it on the. I love seeing that. Man, it's oh. like. You know, it, it, it's like, it's like when you got the gift you wanted at Christmas, and and it you you played with it all day, and it's awesome, and you're just laying in your bed thinking about one awesome freaking day that was. That's how I feel whenever I yeah. watch Nico throw the damn football. I feel like I hit the dang lottery. Um, Awesome stuff, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to this year. I uh, kind of said it in uh, the Tuesday night stream when we were messing around. Uh, Nico dropping dimes. We're going to win two more than nine at least. I, I really do feel that way. So I'm excited, but, 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 but don't read too much into the spring game, guys. No matter what you do, let's be calm. Let's know that Hypel's going to walk it out there vanilla and, uh, you know, if Gaston Moore throws for 19 touchdowns, let's uh, let's not give him the Heisman Trophy on Sunday. All right. There's something I want to smart off about real quick. Yeah, I'm go. Not, I'm, yeah, have no, fun, I'm, no, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bury the lead. I'm not gonna bury yeah. the lead. I'm gonna save yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I'm gonna try to save it for the for the opening topic. But what what about you, Coach Ross? How do you feel? Uh, three and a half weeks into spring camp, are you are you do you think this team's better than you thought three and a half weeks ago? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, anytime you get uh, 15 extra practices, especially at that level, you're going to improve. I mean, even if it's just mental reps with some people like Eric and Carter, that's one person you mm -hmm. keep hearing about. We heard uh, Coach Inge talk about how much progress he's made, even though he's physically out this spring. He's still uh, one of the top guys in the room as far as leadership and uh, knowing what to do and uh, you will take the mental reps, and all that's key. I mean, yes, you love you would love to see them out there getting those physical reps, 
But anytime someone puts you in a, um, a session like these guys are having each day, each practice, and they're working on their fundamentals, working on the proper techniques of where they need to be, um, and then with the young guys working on the installs, uh, offensively and defensive, defensively, that during the spring, that's when they learn it. So that this fall, they can play fast. They're not sitting there, uh, you know, questioning everything they do. They're in there, come this fall, they're playing fast, playing smooth, and uh, trusting their instincts, what they were coached to do this spring. And so I, I think without a doubt we're getting better. I, I know there's a couple guys and uh, a couple wide outs that we've all tied. Actually, it's pretty much the whole wide receiver room. Um, I, I just want to brag on them, man. They, they, they brought it this spring. You know, they had a down spring last year uh, due to either injuries or just it wasn't a very good spring, I thought. This spring, that room brought it. And I am, it, I'm super excited. It's got me, and it's not just Dante Thornton and Chris Brazel. Uh, it's the whole freaking room. It's the freshmen. It's the you know Squirrel White's been a had a quiet veteran. You know he he's been you know he's for us all he is. He's a freaking loud leader, and that, and that's what you love to see. So yes, without a doubt, and that's on both sides of the ball, uh, we've improved. Yeah, I, I like I like what you said there, like Squirrel White. That's what you kind of want from a veteran guy, right? A quiet spring camp. Like, if you're hearing about Squirrel White, it's because he's hurt or he's doing something wrong, uh, he's struggling. Yeah. Ramel Keaton, last spring, we're on here talking about all the drops. Like, this is a dude that we, yeah. we need to rely on in 2023, and, and all we're getting is he's struggling catching the football. Like, that's that's why we're hearing about Ramel Keaton. Squirrel White just going yeah. about business. You're not hearing about it, but you're hearing about the true freshman. And that, man, I really – really think I, you know this wide receiver room i'm starting to buy in i'm starting to believe that we're going to see more than the three i think we're going to see a rotation let's catch up with the chat let's see what you guys are up to i'm going to roll all the way back to 518 and see who the early arrivals were fish and beans was here bright and early it says howdy howdy gbo dustin young is here uh dustin was insulting caner last night he said i just want to clear the air i wasn't slamming caner i just fall asleep to him you know i tell i tell eric that too on the monday morning streams i'm like man I just you put me right to sleep on these Monday mornings. It takes extra coffee to get through those streams. Uh, Kalen GB, somebody will clip that and send it to Kaner. Uh, Kalen yeah, GBO right. is in the house as evening fellow football junk junkies nightly fix incoming. What's up, Kalen? Good to see you in the chat, brother. Rocky Top Tom is here. Justin Sanday was early. Bubbles was here. Matt Dumit was early. Stupid head says, Hey, big orange nation. Uh, we also got a new member of the channel, man. Appreciate you, Larry. Uh, could not do this without the members of the channel, so thank you for becoming a part of the family. Uh, you guys can do the same. Hit the join button. Although, did did your all's YouTube change? My my YouTube, the, the comments and everything are now on the side, and recommended yeah. videos are on the bottom. And if it's yeah. a live stream, the like button's hidden. You've got to close the chat to smash the thumbs up. I have no idea where the join button is at, but Larry found it. So shout out to Larry. You guys hit that join button. You can do it for a dollar a month. We appreciate that support. Memphis Ball is here. Drops a $2 super chat. Nothing to say. Just a tip in the tip jar. We appreciate that, Memphis Ball. Uh, Angry Titan is upset. He gets the name Angry Honest. He drops a $5 super chat and says, where in the hell are the door fees? No soup for you. It's become a lost thing, Angry Titan. You've not been here to enforce. We need somebody at the door making sure everybody drops their tip in the tip jar on the way in. But shout out Angry Titan, the OG of the door fee. We appreciate the $5 super chat. Uh, Jackie Pickle's been a member for four months. Says, hey, guys, sorry I can't make it Saturday. Got a bunch of construction going on at my house. Got to be here. Well, we appreciate the four months of support. Uh, Jackie's fun, too. I like having Jackie on the fan call-in shows. Always a good time. He also drops a $20 super chat. Nothing to say, just a tip in the tip jar, and I know what he wants to hear. He wants to hear the clip because that's Orange Boy. We like Orange Super Chats. We'll play the clip. Rocky Top! <laughs> Shout out, Jackie. We appreciate the love and support, my man. Let's uh, let's get into it. T. Malone, been a member for six months. That's uh, Appreciate that, my man. That's a lot of support. I, could, I, I say it all the time. Couldn't do this without you guys. I, I, I literally could not do this without you guys. I'm only able to provide content full time because of the members of the channel. So shout out to you guys uh, for supporting just a regular dude. For the fans, by the fans, means something around here. 
we're no different than you guys. So we appreciate all the support. All right, we're going to talk about the spring game. We're going to talk about uh, a little recruiting coming up. But I want to start uh, with a couple of videos that I made this week. Transfer portal season is here. It's going to be chaotic. Josh Pate putting out videos every other day talking about how this is about to be complete chaos. Buckle up and get ready. And I played a clip in this morning's video, and I, I want to play it again here and get I – w- I want your all's opinion on this, and I want the chat to chime in as well. Brad drops a $5 super chat, says, Dorfee, uh, that was the shortest booster club meeting I have ever attended, GBO. If it was anybody would, but Brad, I would say I was glad it was short, and I'm glad you're back in the chat, but uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I hope you can find something else to do, Brad. Uh, Brad's good. Ugh. Oh, my wife today. I was like, I got to hang out with that loser at the orange and white game. <laughs> Shout out, Brad. I appreciate the $5 super chat. Let's get into it. I want to play this clip again. This is Josh Pate talking about the chaos of the transfer portal. And I want to kind of maybe try to calm some people down. Let's take a listen uh, to what Josh Pate had to say. Imagine the paranoia, though. The paranoia on how you divide reps. I talked to a coordinator last week who said, my best player we're unsure about at a specific position. He said, we're not giving him first team reps in the spring. We're hoping to send the message to him, but we're really just trying to give reps to guys we know are going to be here. We don't. Let's start with this. We're on here with an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator. Coach Jay, take, take, take this and run with it. You're coaching your guys up. You have to take reps away from a starting linebacker, a starting defensive tackle, a starting safety or a corner because you don't know if he's going to be here after spring ball because of NIL and the transfer portal. Kind of take that and run with it. I mean, for me, um, you know, maybe it's just me, but um, I I think I'd pull the kid in and sit with him behind closed doors and be like, hey, look, where are you at in in, in this with the transfer portal, right? and it, you know it if he's honest with you and he's like hey look i'm transferring then yeah slide him down the depth chart a little but give him reps right don't do him dirty because he was honest with you right he was straight up with you it, it doesn't mean you can't teach him football and foster having a healthy environment um the transfer portal is part of this game now whether i like it or not whether you like it or not uh whether the, his coach likes it or not uh, so it's a reality, right? So when there's a reality, we have to deal with it. Uh, so, you know, I might slide him down the depth chart, but still give him work. Um, if I think he's lying to me and he's being shady, though, and sliding me and I don't believe him or I don't think he's for it with. Then he might as well pack his his crap up and leave right then. And I just won't give him any reps and he can go. Right. But. It's kind of hard, man. I, it, for me, it's like a case by case basis thing. So maybe it's just me. But if I'm really that paranoid about it, uh, then yeah, yeah, I might tell him to pack his stuff right then and there if he can't give me a solid commitment. But if I mean, he look, can be honest with me and tell me no, then then I'll give him some reps and let him do work. Let, let me roll just a couple more seconds yeah. and we'll let Coach yeah. Ross chime in here. I don't know if he's going to be here. We hope so. We think so. We don't know so. Think about getting accurate intel. Getting accurate mm. intel. I think I, that kind of goes in. This, by the way, okay. yeah, yeah, it kind of yeah. goes into what you're saying there. Is this kid being honest with me? Can I trust what he's saying? But, but Coach Rice, what what do you think about you know taking reps away from a one because you're afraid he may hit the portal? It gets worse, by the way. Sit tight because it gets worse with what he says next. But go ahead, Coach. Uh, that that's tough because I mean, mm. it, it for me, and that goes with both sports yeah, that I'm coaching. I got a guy that I know is going to be in the starting lineup, whether it's football or whatever, and he's one of your go-to guys. But hey, there's rumors <laughs> go swirling that you 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 may be transferring. Well, I mean. Me personally, I want to get the guys that are going to be here ready to play because you're going to be the guys that's going to be on the field giving us the best chance to win. I can't sit back and wait on you to make up your mind what you're going to do. And then at the end of the day, you do transfer. Well, that screws the whole team, not just that individual person. It screws the whole team because I should have been giving reps to someone else when they're gone now. So – it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's like Coach Jay said, you got to pull them in. 
hey, listen, you you straight up with me, I will I'll do my best to do my best for you. Mm-hmm. But if you 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 know line or if there's or you've told several people that you're transferring, but you you're not gonna be straight faced with me. Mm-hmm. Sit your ass on the bench and, until the end of spring and pack your bags and go. Because I mean, I'm sitting here, we're trying to win, but at the same time, I'm sitting here trying to make men out of the rest of these guys. And what what's that look to them if I'm sitting here knowing you're going somewhere? What's that say to them mm-hmm. that you don't care about us or something? So my 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 philosophy would be kind of about what Coach Jay said. But if I hear anything, like it's something that's like that day. If I hear a rumor, I'm squashing that, and the you know I'm squashing that bug right away and trying to find out. Say, are you commit? I need to know. Are you a hundred percent committed? That's one of my motto. It's a hundred, hundred and ten percent, no less. You know, and, I, yeah. I got I got a comment on this morning's video because I played this exact clip in that, and this was somebody that was very much pro the other side of this argument you're talking about hey we're, we're trying to build build a winning football team here we, we need to know like all i need to know is are you in or are you out that way if you're out then mm-hmm. good, good good luck Where, wherever you end up wherever you go best of luck i, I got to get the next guy ready right and, and this this guy was very old oh, these players they're, they're the reason that all this money is being made and you're, you're right like nobody's watching college football if the players aren't on the field. But I think, again, it goes back to you got to have rules and regulations. And as much as, look, after the regular season when the portal opens, guess who's making videos every day talking about the portal? After spring practice, guess who's going to be living it up, making videos, making money, growing subscribers, growing the channel? It's content. It's something for us to talk about in the offseason. But as a football coach, it's it's hot garbage. They, they've got to – I think you got to limit the number of transfers. I think if you transfer in conference, you got to sit a year. I think they got to get some rules in place here, Coach Jay. You you were about to say something. Go ahead and jump in. Yeah, there. no, yeah. I just want to make a couple more points too, because listen, when you, uh, first off, you also I feel like do need to get your leadership core involved, right? You need to pull them in separately so that they can keep an eye on the situation because your team captains, your team leaders, they're going to hear stuff that you as a head coach or, or a position coach aren't going to hear. Right. So you need to get them involved in that too. But B, you know, it's going to be a, a big lesson in, in business to some of these kids and not burning bridges. Right. Yeah. Because if I, because if I pull you in and we have that candid conversation, and then you get your off, say your offer, your, your dream school is to make it to Tennessee, right? And then you just burnt me as a coach, right? And now Josh Heupel picks up the phone call and he says, hey, phone, hey, hey, Coach Rice, uh, what's the deal with this kid? I know he's transferring, but like, what kind of kid is he, you know? Is he a good kid? Is he going to do me dirty? Is he going to leave? What's he going to do, well, Coach? Well, I mean, uh, personally, I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to. I, I'm sorry, we got to do the phone thing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think like, I mean, and you're spot on. It's all about, and it's relationships from middle school all the way up to college. I mean, to NFL. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're you're as a coach, you're creating relationships with your players, and do you can you, you got to have that trust? That's one of the best teams. That's all about culture. That's what that magic word that you got to have trust in your players to, for them to be honest with you and up front with you. And that's what talking about your team captains. They, they know before the coach knows a hundred percent of the time, a 99%. Yep. Of the time. And yeah. you just got to not hope that your players are up front with you. And when you're talking about calling those other coaches up, calling a job mm-hmm. up, calling your life career up, Mm-hmm. Hey, this this person, yeah, he busted his butt. He gave his day. He gave his all every time he was on the field uh, with whatever he did in the class or whatever. Or you could be like, no, he's a lazy piece of scum, and uh, that yeah, and he li- and he lied to me, and yeah. he lied, it, and he lied it, right in your face. And you so think Josh Heupel is gonna? Her? Yeah, and say they're a running back. You think Josh Heupel after the the Clemson debacle with with Lynn? That Heupel's yeah. going to drop the bag if a coach says, "Hey, man, this kid, he's gonna he's gonna do to you what the the left tackle at Alabama did to Iowa." 
you, you don't yeah. want no part of this kid. And all of a sudden opportunities are, are ruined for you. So if you are a recruit that happens to come across this video or a college kid, be forthcoming with your coaches. I think you'll find that in a lot of situations, they'll do right by you. They want to see you yep. develop because a healthy program is going to develop you and realize the realities of the situation. And if they don't, then you're not in a healthy program and you really need to get exactly. out of there and still tell them you're leaving and sit if you need to sit and do the right yep. thing. But um, yeah, man, I, I would say you need to, to pull them in, have a talk with them, but it's a tough, tough situation we are in the wild west to a degree and we need rules but i guarantee you these coaches are talking when it comes to these transfers 100 percent, these coaches are talking and with all this money at stake um you want to make sure you're putting in your two weeks notice if you know what i'm talking about you know you don't want to just burn that bridge and, and as as Tennessee fans, as as the casual Tennessee fan, although we're all pretty much diehard Tennessee fans here, when we see a stud go into the portal, we're like, drop the bag. We need that guy. Understand that these back channel communications, coach calling coach, coach calling mm -hmm. assistant, coach calling whoever, and getting okay. feedback, it it all goes oh, yeah. into well, how is that going to impact the culture? It, it's and we can't praise Josh Heupel for the culture that he's built. And then criticize him for not driving a bag on one specific player or two specific yep. players that we like because they're they're ballers and they're gamers. Uh, Kalen GBO for two says Dorfy Duck Farrell until I see an apology video. Kalen, I really think Daryl's coming around. I think he's coming around. The last couple of videos I made, all of a sudden, I tell you boys. Tell you what, y'all stick around this channel long enough, we'll make you a believer. We'll make you a fan of the Talking Balls Network. You can hate us, but the more you stick around, the more you'll start to love us. All right, this video gets a little worse. Uh, we're 30 minutes in. We're 30 minutes in, and we, uh, we're two we're seconds in, into the topic. <laughs> but I love it, man. I love the, I love the conversation. Uh, but let's hear more from Josh Pate, and then we'll wrap it up, uh, this topic, with this one. How do you know the feedback you're getting from your guys is the real feedback? Mm, there is a premier defensive player in the sport right now. Going to be on the cup premier. Let me let me rewind that for anybody that missed. Uh, clean your ears out. Take a listen. Let's hear that again. Getting from your guys is the real feedback. There is a premier defensive player in the sport right now. Going to be on the cover of a lot of preseason magazines if he stays with his current team. Uh, Going to be on all kind of all-American preseason watch lists. And he's on the market. And I'm not sure his team even knows. It's Premier. Let me, let me shut this down real quick. You're, you're muted. You're muted, Coach. Uh, so Perkins is coming from LSU to Tennessee? Is that <laughs> <laughs> See, look, here's the thing. When, when I played that clip this morning, Everybody panicked. Everybody's like, James Pierce is leaving. The sky is falling. Oh. No, I don't think James Pierce is going anywhere. I played that just because you're talking about a premier defensive player. I, I'm just I'm just trying to, to put your eyes on what this portal looks like. One of the best defensive players in the country is leaving, and his team doesn't even freaking know it yet. That's just tying a bow on that entire conversation. It's That's a got freaking Alabama problem. Written all over. It's a it's problem. Got some elite defender from Alabama written all over it. What? Why? Why just stick around? See what the coach was talking about. See what the how spring went. It didn't go that good. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, uh, Jody Wooten for two says, who do you think that defensive player is? I mean, it would be a complete wild guess. I mean, I yeah. we would have no way of knowing, and you know, it's just it's just something I wanted to bring bring up and and. I should have said I don't think it's James Pierce. James Pierce would be crazy to do that, right? It's not. He, he, James Pierce is with the best defensive line coach in the country. Uh, he knows what he's got to do. He's gone through spring camp. Do you really want to transfer and go into fall camp and try to learn a new defense, learn a new coaching staff when it's your money year? Like, James Pierce is looking at a top-10 draft pick after this season. I, I don't see him transferring. Uh, Memphis Ball for another two. Appreciate that super chat. Nothing to say, just a tip in the old tip jar. We appreciate it. Austin Roller becomes a member of the channel. Shout out, Austin, man. If you're not a member of the channel, you don't have a power T beside your name. The rumor on the street is that you're a Gator fan. You can fix that by hitting the join button either down below or you can hide the chat over here and you can find that join button. Uh, there's also a link. Uh, in the description, <laughs> also to the side somewhere. I don't know. Why does you why, don't change what's not broke? Why are we doing this? 
Leave us alone, YouTube. Shout out, Austin. We appreciate the support. Ginger for 10. Special teams. Ross to punt. Carter to receive. Who's our kicker? Carver, Gilbert, Turbyville. I saw somebody ask this on, on VolQuest today, and I'm like, I don't have a clue Turbyville. about who's who's kicking. I think it's Turbyville. He's got the most potential. He's got the biggest mm-hmm. leg. He, uh, I know he's going to keep doing kickoffs, um, but I, I think he's got the biggest potential out of the three. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see Carver or Gilbert because those both of those guys are West Tennessee guys. But um, Turbyville has uh, got a boot on him, to say the least. And uh, I think he's the out front. Now, come this fall, it may change. But I think he's yeah. definitely out front. Agreed. And uh, to to uh, receive on punts, I would say uh, Carter. Yep. On kickoff return, I would say Matthews and Boo. Boo Carter and Matthews on kickoff return. Maybe, yeah, maybe definitely first. Definitely mm-hmm. first back there. And Boo, man. Yeah. Boo is electric. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what he does on special teams. I, I played all the stuff from Josh Pate. I wanted to open up that conversation about the transfer portal. And then I want to continue a conversation from the transfer portal because I made a video earlier this week on this Vol Legacy player, Dallin Hayden, enters the portal. And, you know, Listening to Austin Price, listening to Ryan Callahan at GoVols247, they kind of kind of shut this down pretty quick. And the vibes that I got based on what they said is, is not that, you know, Dallin Hayden doesn't want to come here or Tennessee doesn't think Dallin Hayden's good enough. It's more along the lines of Tennessee is not likely to take a running back in the portal. Now, you know, there's so many different ways to look at this. Uh, AP on the podcast, VolQuest podcast, I think it was yesterday, said if I had to put money on it, They're not going to the portal for a running back. Mike Farrell, take it for what it's worth. This is just a guess, but his dad played there. He's from there, and he's shown flashes of high-level talent over the last two years. The balls would be smart to add him with some losses at running back. I think that's where he ends up. I think he went on to say, Dallin Hayden, I do not think, is coming to Tennessee. Another running back that I made a video on this morning, Damian Martinez, one of the, I think, one of the best running backs in the country. Let, let's talk not necessarily about Dallin Hayden, not necessarily about Damian Martinez. I personally, this is the way I feel. I think they need to add a running back. I think you've got Dylan Sampson, and then I think you've got a whole lot of unproven guys behind him. Cam Selden's not going to be back by game one. He's not. So you're looking at Deshaun Bishop or Khalifa Keith. Khalifa Keith, who averaged like 2.1 yards per carry last year, and shout out Nelson. I know he's not in the chat, but he loves him some Khalifa Keith. He loves giving me a hard time about Khalifa Keith. I've said it till I'm blue in the face. Deshaun Bishop sat at the table to make his commitment with one of these hats on the table and a Coastal Carolina hat on the table and a Tennessee hat. Now, do, do, am I hating? Am I hating on Deshaun Bishop? No, I, I, hope he, I hope he freaking proves me wrong. I would love nothing more than, than Deshaun Bishop to prove me wrong. But guess what? He's unproven. And going back to what Coach Jay said, when I said I'm not going to bury the lead, Deshaun Bishop is going to fall out on Saturday. You can, you can mm-hmm. bet the bank he's going to ball out and everybody's going to be in the comments. Everybody's going to be talking about him. Everybody's going to say he's a gamer. He's a baller. Is he an SEC caliber running back like I think that Dylan Sampson is? I think Cam Seldon is. I, I think Peyton Lewis is. I don't think Deshaun Bishop and I don't think Khalifa Keith are SEC running backs. Hopefully, they prove me wrong. So, Co- Well, I, I, I do think we might learn something about this in the spring game, and let me tell you why. Uh, we're going to be sitting a lot of offense alignment, right? So, and, and I don't mean that so much from the running game, as much as uh, the throw game. <laughs> to use a but oh, there we go. I right? love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To it. use a but Jonesism, uh, will they be able to block? Because I'll tell you what, when we're that thin on the offensive line right now, which we should be, we should be bubble wrapping them. Our defensive line isn't thin, right? We could bubble bubble wrap our first string and our second, third string. Uh, we'll get in the backfield. So we're going to see how they block against the pass. And for me, that's going to be the test if these backs can play in the Southeastern Conference and are ready to play in the Southeastern Conference. Um, separate note, uh, this young man needs to pick up a roll of YD uh, shoulder pad tape and uh, get that jersey taped up underneath that shoulder pad. Just driving me a little crazy, but that's a sub note. Um, go if ahead. your shoulders Let's look try. like that, would you cover up your shoulder? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, they're still gonna look good though. You get you get some YD two sided YD tape. Uh, your local uh whatever sporting goods store, most of them have it. 
Uh, but you know, yeah. I just noticed yeah, yeah, when know. we were in the back room, you had the tank top on. Then we go. Live. Uh, it was. You I'm right by uh-huh. the air conditioner. Yeah, you put a t-shirt on because you're on. Hey, don't, don't get me wrong. Like that. I'm wide, dude. I'm wider. It, not only do they look like that, I'd probably blind everyone because <laughs> I haven't gotten my first tan of the year yet, and and I, I'll be, I'm wider than uh, uh, Jules Irving uh, Christmas right now. But uh, uh, yeah, man. Um, if, if I had guns like that, maybe I maybe I would hike it up even higher and tape it up. If I had guns like that, y'all know it because I'd never wear a shirt on. Camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, I'd be uh, buying Miss Mrs. J's Razorbacks from the. Uh, <laughs> from the uh, from that's, the that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so so Coach Jay with a good counter argument there. I like that. Uh, you're going to have to go against a pretty solid defensive line, Coach Rice. If I told you right now, you can add Dallin Hayden. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. No questions. If you want Dallin mm-hmm. Hayden, you can add him to the room. Would you do it? Or would you pass and say, I'm going to go uh, with Deshaun Bishop over Dallin Hayden, a guy that ran for what? I, th- I, just, I forget. I don't have the numbers in front of me. He ran for a whole lot of yards as yeah. a true freshman, yeah. uh, and then he redshirted his sophomore year. Buried on the depth chart. I get it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm taking him. Uh, I think um, you, you 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 look at the room. You got Cam Southern who's going to miss probably three or four games. Um, you have uh, – Deshaun Bishop, who don't get me wrong, I love his effort. He he's a dog. He brings it every day to practice. You know, he showed out last spring. He's showing out this spring. Um, Peyton Lewis not here for spring count. Well, he's here. He just can't do anything because of injury. Um, uh, let's see, Khalifa Keith. I I just don't think there's much playmaker in him. I, I mean, I I just. Just from what I've seen, I don't think there's much of uh, elusiveness and, um, you know, breakaway ability. Uh, but I think Dallin Hayden is like um, a good number two come in, bounce 1A, 1B type back to compare with, I mean, to do with Dylan Sampson. So that's that's definitely something I'd like to see. I I, I don't think. Deshaun Bishop would get the amount of carries that Dallin Hayden would get if he was here. Like, say, mm, mm. say Dallin Hayden mm. was here, I think he would split more closer to um, – I think Bishop would get some carries, but I think it would be more like 23-8 and, uh, instead of 18-16. Yeah. And if you Dylan Sampson – yeah, if Dylan Sampson's that dude, like that's my thing. Are, are they planning to just feed Dylan Sampson like eighty percent of the carries, eighty five percent of the carries? But then again, you got to stay healthy. You have to yeah. stay healthy, and that, that's that's the worst part about about it. I, and I was concerned about the running back room going into it, but when Cam yeah. Selden got hurt, I'm like, this is a freaking problem. We have to address this after the spring. But you know, Volquez has reported every practice, Heupel's been around the running backs. He's been right on top of them. Guess what? Josh Eibel knows way more, way more about his running back room than any of us. But mm-hmm. it's just I, I'm sticking to my guns here, man. I just and I, I hope they prove me wrong. I'm not trying to be hard on kids or, or or be rough on kids. Deshaun Bishop has never had a carry in college football, not one carry. Yeah. Khalifa Keith has had a handful, and he averages two yards carry. I think that's a problem. I think anybody saying we're great, like we're fine, we have no problems. I'm I'm a little hesitant, a little hesitant. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Coach Jay, as you smirk over there in the corner? No, just it, yeah, we'll find out a little more in the spring game. But once again, uh, I think I'll defer to Coach Hype, and uh, and hopefully he's right. You know, <laughs> he's been good thus far. So uh, we'll see. Uh, he also knows a little more about the nature of Cam Seldon's injury, right? Mm-hmm. And when he feels like he'll actually return. And you know how many carries he feels like he's going to have to rely on on that third back for. So yeah, I think I'll defer to to Coach Hype and uh, maybe change my mind completely after the spring game. We'll find out. I think I think as far as transfer portal, I mean yes, I agree. I, so I, I I don't want somebody like Damian Martinez because I think that'd be a cancer to the not not for not for him coming in. Now, his personality, I think he'd be a cancer to the culture because he's going to be – he's going to demand RB1 status. He's going to mm-hmm. demand a lot of NIL money. 
I, I just – that's not the type of guy I want to come in. I want a guy like Dallin Hayden who seems like – I mean, he, he hasn't had that proven year where he can command RB1 status um, like Damian Martinez. That dude – that dude's had two really good years um, in the Pac-12. And the reason why he's leaving is because we all – as we all know, Oregon State don't have a conference anymore. Um, so – it's my my thing is yes take someone like Dallin Hayden if not let let Deshaun Bishop get you know or Khalifa Keith get seven eight carries a game let Dylan Sampson tote a load as long as he stays healthy and I mean because he's your he's one of your top athletes he's your top leader on offense other than Nico and Cooper Mays so I think I think we'll be good to go Offensively, I do think we – obviously, we've said it. Another offensive lineman, I would love to have another offensive lineman, uh, tackle or guard or center. Uh, I'd, I'd take one of uh, at least two guys, uh, one of interior, one out outside guy. And then um, defensively, I, I – there, you know, there's just not many holes on the we, – we've all talked about the defense being the weaker link, but going into this year, who's to say the defense ain't the strongest link? I mean, um, there's Nico. not any holes. Nico says it. <laughs> well, yeah, I know Nico does. But I'm just saying there's not any holes really on the depth chart. Or there's depth at defensive line. There's depth at linebacker. I know, granted, we're dealing with some, uh, you know, injuries guys coming back from. And the secondary, there's depth. It's just not been proven depth. Proven, yeah. So I'm worried about depth at star. Depth at star. Yeah, depth, I can depth see at that. safety. But you got linebacker, but, linebacker, and defensive line. Yeah. This this Ooh. football team. Yeah. And I, I wanted to play Coach Inge's uh, press conference. I don't know that we'll do that because we're 42 minutes in. Yeah. But man, listening to him talk about that linebacker room, listening to Jeremiah T. Lander. Yeah. That and. I was patting Coach Jay on the back uh, yesterday, talking to Nelson on Twitter, and he was talking about you know how loaded that linebacker room is. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. Coach Jay's been telling y'all every yeah. single every single kid that was in that linebacker room that we broke down film on from Jeremiah T. Lander to Arian Carter, and he he brought up Jordan Burns. He's like, man, nobody's talking about Burns. I think mm-hmm. he's really good. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, a certain Coach Jay was talking about him a long time ago and saying how underrated yeah, he was. Cool. That that linebacker room is loaded with talent. And Edwin violent. Spillman. Edwin violent. Spillman. Yeah. You know, he may be the, you know, Boo Carter. You, you think about Boo Carter all the time. You think about Braylon Staley. You think about Mike Matthews. Those are the three freshmen that everybody br- – I'm telling you, Edward Spillman is getting his own buzz of his own. And mm-hmm. he's, he's creating some little, hey, is, is he as a freshman going to be in the rotation? Because, I mean, that dude is – if they run a rotation, we don't know how Inge is going to run his room, but that dude is, as a freshman coming in, like he's a freaking junior and just, you know, putting on a show. And, I, I mean, I can't wait to see our defense. And I'm an offense guy, and I'm saying that. So, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this year, y'all. I, I When we talked about predictions, I was already at 10-2. and two. Y'all, I'm almost to the end point of eleven and one undefeated, and let's do this thing. Let's go. Let's like go. It's, it's it's like was it, wait, 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 wait. Was it Coach Jay's rap? Was it Coach Jay's rap that put you? Rap. The to- I thought so. Yeah. That's dropping yeah. bars. Yeah, he's thought. dropping bars in this thing. <laughs> yeah, but uh, like I'm, I'm like, where's the weakness? There is none. There's no Just weakness. Death. Just death. Just yeah, it just, just feels like a couple uh, spots, and that's just recruiting, right? That that yeah. and some, somebody like somebody was going nuts in the comments about Hypel's recruiting, and it's like you you, you got to realize they have been under the the thumb of an NCAA investigation since he got here. Like the class of twenty five for me is the turning point, Coach Jay. Yeah. This the, the class of twenty five is when we're going to really find out if Josh Hypel can recruit or not. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I and. Agree. and he should have all the ammo he needs, man. I, I, this team should be taking off. He's going to have a lot of equity out there when you see what he's done with this defense and, and how it's been turned around, how he planted a flag in the ground and was, 
you know, willing to say, hey, they, this is a big deal here. This is UT. We're going to play defense. We're not going to uh, we're not going to play Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma football, you know, and just worry about the offense. We're going to take great care in defense. And we can all see that, man. The, the proof is already out there, uh, in my opinion. So I'm pumped, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go, too. I, I think I jumped uh, into that, you know, 10, 10 to 11 win bracket um, early. Uh, they just got it, man. They, they got the players to do it. Will they stay healthy? Will they keep the continuity? Will they have the depth to do it? We're about to find out. But uh, this team gets a couple breaks and can stay healthy. Mm. They'll be right there, man. They'll be dangerous. Uh, but you always need that, right? Uh, the yeah. championship team needed a break, right? They, they had breaks. They had a break or two in the Syracuse game. They had a break in the Arkansas game. Uh, you know, uh, you're going to need them. You need them every year uh, when you play. Uh, but if they can catch, catch those breaks or two, if they can stay healthy, that's the main thing because depth is still an issue. That's what I want out of the transfer portal after spring is just continue to build that depth. I'd like to see depth at the center position, depth at the guard position. We talked about it, maybe depth at the star position, but I think the coaches will dictate how they feel about that. It is just like the running back position. Um, we'll, we'll find out, man, about to find out. I'm I'm stoked about Spillman too, though. Yeah, if we have yeah. 2022 offensive line health, mm-hmm. look out. Like, Watch out. That, that, that's the key. That's the key. If we have the health that our offensive line did in 2022, look out. And really, we were healthy across the board. We had, other than Hooker late in the season and Tillman, that was a pretty healthy team. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm Man, national championship! Here we come, baby. I, I, it's. I'm almost to the point to say, <laughs> I'm putting 500 on the table. Let's go. Uh oh, that's the oh, that's the overreaction to spring. Uh-oh. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like is, this, is this a nine or ten win team? And then I watch spring camp, and I'm like, this is a ten win team. Coach Rice is like, Natty, we go into the Natty. natty. Hey, All you gotta ship. see is that dime, Nico just. Throw the dog that Thornton. I mean, there's not is that not so freaking sick? Dude. And then Jacoby Thomas <laughs> picking the ball and taking it back to the house, and That's Dylan Stats breaking people's ankles, and James Pierce just looking like a freaking dog. I mean, what I'm, more I'm, do you want? I, I'm right. <laughs> I'm right about twenty percent of the time around here. And when I'm not, everybody lets me know. But about twenty percent of the time, I get to say, "Hey, I told y'all something." I doubled down on Dante Thornton after the injury. Everybody talking about how Dante Thornton sucked and he was a bust. And you told us, but you promised us. I'm, I doubled down. I said, "Boys, give him an off season to learn the offense, get healthy, stay on the outside." People are saying he could be the best wide receiver yeah. on this team. We're almost 50 yeah. minutes into this thing. We're going to transition to the second topic. The se- I guess we'll just stay live till, till midnight. Yeah, second yeah, topic good. of the I'm night. I, I do want to talk a little recruiting. We're not going to go too in-depth or crazy tonight, but I do want to talk a little bit of recruiting. Uh, we got 176 people watching live. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us on this Wednesday night. Do us a favor. Smash the thumbs up. I don't know what the number's at. It was a little low. We got to fix that. Hit the thumbs up. If you got this new YouTube format, you got to close the live chat. Hit the thumbs up. If you're on the old one, hit the hit the thumbs up down below. Uh, but we appreciate you being here. If you want to go a step further, hit share. Blast this thing out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, let somebody know we're live. I said at the top of uh, top of the show, we got a busy seven days coming up. Orange and white game coming up on Saturday. We'll be in G10, hanging out at 10 a.m. Do not bring me gifts. Do not bring me a bottle of Buffalo Trace. I I, I don't I don't I don't want you to do that. Uh, but if you do, I would accept it. Don't bring me Jim Beam. Don't bring me. Uh, I wear an extra large. If you were wondering, extra large T-shirt, any Tennessee merchandise. Don't do that. I don't need you to do that. Just come hang out. G10, 10 a.m. is going to be a good time. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, four-star offensive tackle Jalen Matthews out of Tom's River, New Jersey. He's going to be in town this weekend for the Orange and White game. He's going to come on the channel Sunday night at 7 o'clock, and he's going to recap his visit. Going to be a good time Wednesday night. 7 p.m. Eastern time, Jamal Wallace is going to be back in the house, so come hang out for that. Uh, But the easy thing to do is to hit that thumbs up, share out the link. We would greatly appreciate it. Let me catch up with you guys in the chat. Moon Drops Beauty has been a member for nine months. She's about to give birth to her Talking Vols baby. Nine months into this thing, we appreciate that support as a member. Uh, Jackie Pickle for five. Has anyone heard anything about who might end up at that left guard position? 
Talk, uh, talking Vol- talking Vols was talking about it. I think VolQuest was talking about it yesterday. Uh, said they don't think they're going to add somebody in the portal at left guard because they're looking at Andres Carrick or Jackson Lampley or Dane Davis, Shamrod Umrov moving to guard. Uh, so I, I don't think they're going to add somebody at guard. They did mention, uh, I don't remember if it's Coach Jair, Coach Rice said center, a backup center. Uh, yeah. They did mention that was a, a possibility to add in the portal. So I would look for Sham. I would look for, you know, one of the four guys that I mentioned probably getting that left guard position. Papa J for 10 says getting excited for fall ball. Man, we got a long, long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm excited for fall ball too, but I'm also excited for recruiting because early in the process, right, you're talking about spring visits and top five, top ten lists. The summer's exciting because kids are taking officials. Kids are narrowing down decisions. Oh, yeah, I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I saw that, dude. That uh, Man, I was talking about the wide receivers. Those in-state kids, you better jump in the boat because there's a mm-hmm. lot of talent at that wide receiver position that wants to end up at Tennessee. Uh, Benjamin Franklin for two says, Nico over under 36.5 total touchdowns. Let me know, fellas. What, how many did Hendon have through the air? I know he's saying total. 28. 32. I thought 28 and five. 28 no. through the air, five on the that, ground. I, that's what 20. I thought, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Find okay. out. I, I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. 32 total. That, yeah. Let Which me pull, I'm going to pull it up. You know, there's this thing. There's this thing called the internet. Internet. Yeah, we can I knew it was 32 out. or 33. I just. It's something he like that. He had in 2022, 27 through the air. And he okay. had. What in the heck? All right. He had 27 through the air, five on the ground. So 32. 32. Yeah. I yep. think Nico's going to have more on the ground and more through the air, but 36 and a half. I think he does it. Number. It's right he at had, it. Had, sure. How many? Hendon had 33 through there his junior year, didn't he? 31. First year? 31. 31. 31 through the air and five. So he had 36, 36. his junior year. And hmm. imagine if he had stayed healthy, what the number would have looked like in 2022, right? You got to think I about think, that. Yeah, that's too. true. I think he does it, man. I think he can do it. Yeah, definitely. My money, my money's all in, y'all. Y'all just don't go. Go. He already my hit the bet. freaking all in. Every single yeah. bet. Coach Rice is taking it. John Mills been a member for 15 months. Shout out, John. Appreciate that. Memphis Ball been a member for 10 months. Hit that join button. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for the support. Well, I want to talk a little bit about recruiting, but I want to play this clip as we lead into recruiting because one of my favorite things is, you know, we've been fortunate to have some of these recruits come on the channel. And if they're not on the channel, uh, you read interviews with them, right? And they talk about family and atmosphere. And Coach Jay said on a re- recent show, these kids can see right through your your nonsense. They can see when yep. you're fake. They know when you're real and authentic. Listen to Dylan Sampson Talk about Coach Heupel and recruiting. I love this. Taylor. Coach Heupel comes in, man, I'm talking about I've never – no head coach has ever called me that much in recruiting. And, like, I don't know if yeah, you can say yeah, the same, but, like, yeah, I haven't – On FaceTime. I didn't, I didn't like get chilling. calls from the head coach like that. Like, he just – he made it feel normal and regular. And I tell this story all the time. That's how I know that he was so serious about family. When I came on my visit and we was eating dinner at Root Chris, Jabari Small was my host. <laughs> and – Coach Hypo, he's walking around the tables. Keep in mind, like, they've only been here for a couple months. Hasn't, hasn't played a game yet. Like, only been here for a couple months. Still learning new faces. Jabari's mom FaceTimes him, you know. Coach Hypo walks around the table, greets his mom, full name, first name, last name. Just ask how she's doing. And it felt, it looked, felt real genuine. Genuine. Like, that was a moment, an unspoken moment. I was like, okay, they building something real, you know. So, I was like, this might be the place. Coach Jay, you're the one that said it. These kids can see right through it. What do you think when yep. you see that clip and just more confirmation? It's just more confirmation. Um, he just is, man. He he's he's real genuine. Um, shoot, like I said, I, I I was around him for like five minutes on the field. You know, after that game, saying hi to uh, to P and uh, you know Nico's mom and all that stuff. But it, he just he's genuine with him, man. You can tell when it's bull crap, right? It's it's really not that hard to tell when it's bullcrap, right? You can tell when someone cares when they legitimately care, um, and when you're a commodity to them too, right? Like, you know, you can tell when someone doesn't want to be there uh, when you 
fly in on the helicopter because it looks cool, right? And, yeah. you know, you meet with someone before the game. You show up for the fourth quarter, right? You you kind of are talking and messing with your coach. But, you know, when you show up, you, you give hugs to the family if you're allowed to on the recruiting trip, if it's not dead period. But you show up to a game, you actually watch the whole game, right? You actually stand there on the sideline and give a crap and and talk about it and you know invest yourself in what they're doing right and 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 who they are um it's important and you can't fake it and a lot of coaches uh, do fake it or a lot of coaches lean on you know that i'm high energy or i build this system right they always have an angle they play mm -hmm. but to me it the, the strongest angle is family I know there's been, you know, Heifel's not the first coach to do it right. I know uh, Urban Meyer famously liked to to play that angle, and I know Saban did to, to some degree as well. But um, to me, it's the strongest angle you can play. Uh, but to actually do it and be genuine, it, it, it's easier said than done because you actually have to give a crap, right? That's the caveat is you actually have to care, and it can't be fake. Otherwise, they're going to see right through you. But when you can do that, you build a family, man. You build something strong. Uh, you build something where you're not seeing mass exodus it, it, like you're seeing at other universities at Tennessee, right? You, you, you don't see that at all, um, not to the numbers at least yet that we've seen it. It's not like we've been impervious to, to transfers. But, you know, since Pruitt left, we haven't had an offseason where 10 guys transferred. And Lester guys, with the caveat, is Lester guys we've said, hey, man, look, um, there's not really going to be opportunity. It's a smart thing for you to do. About the only player I can think that happened in the last cycle, too, that left without us wanting him to leave was probably Tyler Barron, um, to my knowledge. Uh, maybe you can correct me, Boogie, if I'm that's, I, I mean, that's someone. what I was going to say. Since, since Heupel took over, na name a guy that left that you were, like, devastated over. And yeah. I, I think Tyler Barron was all about this. Yeah. I think he wanted yeah. a certain yeah. amount, and, and they said no, and so he moved on. But guess what? We're going to be just fine on that defensive line. Right? And, that, again, it goes back to it. drop drop the bag, spin this, spin that. I, I, I've said it till I'm blue in the face. This this administration, the the collective – the coaching staff, they want to spend money on certain positions. And that's why, as much as I'm screaming about running back, that is not a position that they want to spend their money on. So when you've got a guy at Oregon State who is, you know, the rumors out there is that he was offered $400,000 to stay at Oregon State and he hits the portal, does he want 500 k 600 k is, is Josh Eiffel and Inspire Sports Group, are they willing to pay that much for a running back? I don't, I don't think they need to because I think they trust their system and know where they need legitimate dudes. But, it, it, again, it goes back to what I said with Nico. Like, th this offense is elite. How much better can it be when – like, Hendon wasn't a five-star. The Jalen Hyatt wasn't a five-star. How good is this offense when you got Nico and you got Mike Matthews? Maybe you go land a guy like Jamie French or Caleb Cunningham. How much better can it be when you have five stars out there instead of three stars and four stars? Let me do this real quick. Uh, Miss Vol Memphis Vol drops a $2 super chat. We appreciate that support. Could not do this without your funding. He says, 2024, Nico, 33 touchdowns through the air, nine on the ground, four interceptions let's get that interception number down just a little bit let's get that number down just a little bit uh shout out memphis fall appreciate the support brother uh let, let's continue to talk about recruiting big recruiting weekend coming up i've not seen a finalized list of who all is going to be here but it's headlined by a couple of main eventers coach rice george is going to be back in town that's crucial right he's going to be in town he's able to build on those relationships He's going to be accompanied by five-star offensive tackle David Sanders. We've talked on here before how important it was that he was here last weekend. Now he's going to come back this weekend. Missed yeah. the spring game. I didn't even know that. You guys clued me yeah. in on that. He missed the Clemson spring game to be in Knoxville last weekend. Going to be in town for the orange and white game. Going to take his official visit in June. Jalen Matthews, as I said, he's going to be in town. Going to take. Uh, he's going to be right here on the Talking Balls Network Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, recapping that visit. I saw a great – because for me, th this class of 25 definitely feels like it's offensive line heavy, wide yeah. receiver heavy. 
I saw a great post, a great post on VolQuest. Somebody said over under 1.5. You're getting 1.5. You got to go under, so you're only getting one or over. Yeah. You're getting two. I'm going to give you the list, Coach Rice. You give me the answer. Uh, uh, Jalen Matthews, uh, David Sanders, uh, two, Josh two, Petty. Two. It's over. it's over. Let's go. Keep, Let's keep, go. Let me, let me let me rattle off the list. Jalen Matthews, right. David Sanders, Josh Petty, Andrew Babalola, Don uh, Dontrell Glover, and Juan Gaston. Those I think you get three. Though that see that's where I'm at. Those are some dudes. I'm at. I'm at. I think we're getting at least two. I know. And I'm two. I'm hoping we can get three. AP responded to the to that post and said over all caps over. Yeah. Those are all top hmm. three hundred guys. Two of those dudes are five stars. Wait, no, three of those guys three are five stars. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Matthews, highly rated four star. Uh, but, but big, big weekend coming up. What, what is this coaching staff? Who, who are the key characters if we're going to get a top, top ten, top five class for you? Uh, David Sanders being the you know main one. We got G Mac in the boat. Uh, one of the main wide receivers. Um, of course, they're not. I don't think French or um, Cunningham are coming this weekend, but. No. Um, but it'd be one of them. Uh, go ahead and tag on one of those other offensive linemen, whether it be um, Matthews, which he'd be the other guy I think we are for sure getting. I, th- I think we're pretty high on him right now. Juan mm-hmm. Gaston, uh, AP seems to think we're, we've are we picked up some steam with him over the last couple weeks. Um, Marcus Harris, the wide receivers, uh, Marcus Harris, I think we're in a good spot with him. Um, defensive wise, defensive wise, um, you know it's kind of a quieter defensive class. You know, last class we went heavy, I think, on the defensive side. This class is a little, uh, I think they're really focusing on that offensive line. I think it's big on the offensive line. This class, uh, wide receivers as well, because I, I think you, I, 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 I think you're hoping, you, of course, Brew will be gone. Um, Dante will be a, a high NFL draft pick. You're hoping maybe Brazil. Uh, no, he, he's got to stay one more year, no matter what. So, and then, uh, you'll see what else comes. Um, but David Sanders, two of, two of those other offensive linemen, G Mac, uh, I know he's on campus this weekend. Uh, there, you know, the, another thing, there's tons of 20 high level 26 is going to be on campus this weekend too. Um, so, uh, I think if we could get three of the big guys that are coming in town this weekend, um, to tag along with GMAC, uh, what's one of the top wide receivers? I haven't seen the complete list. Um, who, who wide receiver wise is coming in this weekend? I've not seen a finalized list. I, I haven't either. I haven't so, either. I think. Uh, you know, because <laughs> Chad's gonna laugh. Now, Sierra White, I think, is coming in this weekend. I did think I see saw that that he was coming in this weekend. Um, so, uh, David Sanders and Jalen Matthews and Juan Gaston, I think, are are uh, as far as roster needs. Oh no! Did Dobber you're, take him out? No. What? You're back. He's you're back. back. You're back. You cut out for like oh. ten seconds. Oh well, uh, I, it didn't show up on my side. Um, but yeah, three those top three offensive linemen, um, G Mac, of course, in the boat, and then getting about. I personally, to to this point, I'm thinking we're landing five wide receivers. I really do think we may take five wide receivers. And maybe gray shirt one of them, um, which I know that's very unheard of, but that is a possibility. Um, and and the defensive wise, I think you need to add uh, some secondary guys to go along with. Um, oh, uh, what's his name? It's leaving me. The guy we already got. Uh, he's he's rising up the boards. Oh, what, what position? Is his name? Defensive back, cornerback. He's, he was on campus this weekend. Um, I wanted to say Dylan, Georgia. but it's not, it's not Dylan. Georgia. He's already in Dylan, the boat. Dylan Lewis. Yeah, Dylan Lewis. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan Lewis. Lewis. Dylan Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we need to get a couple more guys to go in the boat with him. Uh, I know we had started out with several defensive, defensive backs, 
But I, I, I need a couple de elite defensive backs to tag along in this class. You know, that's something you, – you got the Jordan Matthews, you got um, uh, Ricky Gibson – Two classes ago within this class, you got uh, Boo Carter, you got um, Beasley, and you got Marcus Gorey. Don't sleep but, on Idris Farouk either. And, and Idris Farouk. There's been a lot of good talk yeah, about good. him. Uh, Christian Connor. We also got Christian Connor a couple classes ago. Uh, John Slaughter. You know, he's he's been getting a lot of buzz. Uh, another guy that, I mean, a couple spots. We haven't landed that five-star defensive back yet. I mean, I don't get me wrong. The guys we've got are high level, and I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, in orange and white. But we haven't locked in that and signed that elite DB uh, as far as star rating goes. I'm not saying because Boo Carter is elite, and I think both Beasley's elite and all those guys. But mm -hmm. as far as ratings go, I'd like to see us nab one of those this, uh, this year too. I, th I think Shady Hayward could be uh, – Yeah, I think Shady uh, He's – He's elite. What What about yeah, you, Coach yeah. A? Uh, you can go defense, offense. You can talk about whatever you want with recruiting. I see people in the chat talking about linebackers. The I mean, you got such a loaded young linebacker room. That's you know that's why I think you got to look at what 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 they're looking for as needs. I think clearly they're prioritizing the offensive line. Uh, but what do you think they got to do to to get a top ten, top five class? Anybody on your radar? I mean, I think you got to seal. I think you got to see old Mr. Sanders first and foremost, right? Yeah. He's got to be uh, a target number one after George McIntyre. And I feel like he is. I want three of them. I agree. I want three of those offensive linemen. Um, I hear the ch chat talking about Terry and Grant a little bit. And, you know, he's someone we've talked about on this channel. Uh, we'll see if we can flip him over from, uh, uh, from Purdue. And, and we'll see if he's a take for us, too. That's something we talked about as well, right? Seems like we have shown some interest but are not 100% sold. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, yeah, Sheedy, for sure. Uh, get him on campus. Get three of these offensive linemen. And, and like Coach Rice said, a strong defensive back. I think, I think you can afford to be selective at linebacker. I don't think you got to – you know, just take whoever to be a linebacker. But if you have a strong option, take him. Uh, the kid from modern day would be great. If you get the kid from modern day, yeah. if you get the kid from Nebraska, I think he'll be kind of a hard pull away from his home, home school. But uh, I like Todd Jackson. I don't know well. how, how realistic oh. that is. He, his yeah. film uh, makes me – He's on my like list Shady. as well. Like Shady, makes me happy to watch him just murder kids. I yeah. love it. Yeah, I don't know that Todd he wants Jackson. to do it in front of their families, but he murders people for sure. <laughs> yeah, he definitely murders people. Um, uh, Gerard Smith on the edge, right? I'd yeah. like to add a, a edge that could play counter to Ethan Utley, maybe, you know, at that weak side defensive line position. Uh, so Jared Smith is definitely a name that I would like to see in the boat, uh, you know, to solidify that class. But I think if you can get two five-star offensive linemen, mm -hmm. one four-star oh. to build on what we've got and put, you know, four four solid to five wide receivers that are, you know, four stars, maybe sprinkle a five-star there. I think you get it done at that point. So um, that's awesome, man. I think you're going to get a lot of momentum once the season starts too. Yep. So yep. Yep. that'll be all, all dandy. I had the, uh, I had the coach inch. Uh, media appearance pulled up. I don't think we need to go through it. We're yeah. already an hour and ten minutes in, so let's kind of let's kind of jump into the next topic. But let me catch up with you guys in the chat. John Mills drops a two dollars super chat. Uh, they they usually complain about the logo on my hat, but now they're complaining about the style of your hats. Two flat bills. What's up with those hats? Do they not understand? They live in the state of Tennessee. Hey, Coach Jay's out in California, and and. I think Coach Rice looks great. I, they're repping Talking Vols hats, John. What more do you want, bro? I think they look great in their Talking Vols merch. If only I would wear Talking Vols merch, but I never do. Uh, I never do. Uh, Jenny's in the house. What's up, Jenny Dorfee? I am working, but I wanted to pop in GBO. It's good to see you in the chat. Jenny, thank you for the super chat. Memphis Vol for five. I want everyone to remember the night they played the Vols. Oh, yeah. I, I, want, I want other fan bases to dread. 
than playing mm-hmm. Tennessee, the way we used to dread playing Alabama and Florida yep. and Georgia. I want them to dread playing us because they know that we're going to bring it. Uh, let's 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 tie a bow on spring camp. Maybe we can blend this into the orange and white game. Look, Coach A brought up a great point. Maybe maybe we'll see something out of these running backs because the defensive line is so deep. We're going to have some young offensive linemen out there. Don't put too much into a spring game. It is a, it is a, it's, I, I don't even know if it's a scrimmage. It's a glorified scrimmage. It's, it's, Josh Heibel's not going to show anything. It's going to be on the SEC network. He's not going to show you anything. It's going to be very basic, very vanilla. So maybe, maybe we just tie a big fat bow on spring camp. You know, I, and, and I said to you guys going into this thing, maybe some spring surprises. What surprised you uh, coming out of spring camp? And, and for me, and I doubled down on it, but it's, it's Dante Thornton, man, to, to hear, the media who has, you know, I, I get it. They have limited time at practice. They watch him stretch and do some routes on air, but they also talk to this coaching staff. They have relationships with his coaching staff, and people are saying that Dante Thornton could be the best wide receiver on this team. That's excite, excites me. What, what did he run? Was it like 21 mile an hour in practice yeah. the other day? Well, Come 21, on. 21.2 something. That's elite speed, his length. Like, he is born – picture perfect for this offense so that 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 excites me and then seeing the the young guys in the secondary seeing jacoby thomas come in and kind of be a leader in, in the back end that that excites me jamal mccoy not really surprised sit right here and listen to coach jay tell me every reason why we should bank on him being successful at corner and then ricky gibson is him I, like i think rick i think we're going to be solid at corner so we know we got a great defensive line we know we got some dogs in that linebacker room if the secondary can be uh, just a fraction better than last year, and then the offense is going to be what it is. Let's let's go, boys. Ten wins, ten wins or bust. College football playoff or bust. So, Coach yep. Jay, tie a big fat bow on spring camp. Anything you're looking for in the spring game? Anybody that surprised you coming out of spring camp? Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, <clears throat> out of spring camp, uh, man. I think the the thing that surprised me was the young guys, the the freshmen. Mm-hmm. Right, we. I feel like it's been a long time since we've had, we might have buzz about one freshman, right? Or, you know, hear a couple good things here and there about a freshman, but it seems like across the board, they've looked good. Uh, for Pete's sake, you were just talking about, Edris Farouk looks amazing mm-hmm. during drills. Marcus Gloria mm-hmm. looks awesome. We've heard the buzz about Coop, Boo Carter. Uh, we've got veterans out there saying Mike Matthews, once he, figures it out completely is going to be pretty much unstoppable. Um, Brandon Staley, man, uh, a guy that can make you miss in a phone booth in a hurry. Um, uh, Really, really good. Um, uh, The tight ends, the depth in the tight end room has been a surprise to me. I, I think we've got three really, really good options. And I don't even think our option four or five are, are bad when you consider they are four and five options, right? I think they're good options yeah. for that deep in your depth chart. Yeah. Um, so that surprises me. That surprised me a bit. Um, I could keep going down, right down the line. I, I, I'll hold on Nico. I wasn't surprised by Nico. We all know mm. I've been yapping about Nico. I wasn't surprised. Yeah. I said after the bowl game, we're not going to see the same Nico in spring practice that we saw after that bowl game and we haven't right he 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 put on some weight he his footwork is that much tighter i think we see the darts he's throwing are that much more succinct uh uh when he throws them so that didn't surprise me at all uh but even the defensive line who i knew was going to be deep they just surprised me on how deep and how fast and how tenacious they look and it, in the small amount of film we've been given it, is the other thing and, and finally uh the other thing that surprised me and, and i don't want to say it's like fully a surprise but maybe it's more just a tip of the cap um, this coaching staff appears to have this team running quick right they they, they seem to have uh, this race car tuned up and it is running its practice laps fast and tight around the yeah. track right now, right? Yeah. yeah, I know Coach Rice agrees. It's something we've talked about in the back room. They they have this team dialed in. They not <laughs> hate to bring up Rocky, man, but they look like they got that eye, Boogie, right? Yeah. They look like they, they're hungry, man. They look like that. they got that eye of the tiger. And 
that's something to be excited about. It looks like the buy-in level is high, which is why, you know, Coach Rice and me are getting together our our parlays, our, our Nico for Heisman to Tennessee National Championship parlays and, and hoping we hit big winners and stuff like that because, um, you know, when you've been around a lot of football and you've been around a lot of hype jobs, um, when you see something – that looks real like this. It's not just you hoping something works out. You hoping Nico turns it on and you see actually more tangible things on the football field, man, you get fired up and, and they look like they have something tangible this year. So I'm super excited about this team. Everybody's taking this time to, uh, to show off how long they've been supporting the talking balls network. And I love it. I'm here for it. We, yeah, we, awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to double down. I'm going to say it again. We, I would not be doing this every single day without working for the man if it wasn't for the members for the fans by the fans also fan funded you want to support this channel you like the live streams you like the videos you like the community aspect right I, I, one of my favorite things is when i create the stream for the post games you guys are in the chat the entire game interacting with each other man this this is a family this is a community look i don't like hanging out with people I'm like, why do I put myself in these situations? But I owe it to you guys to come down to the Orange Y game, hang out, put some names with faces. I'm excited to come hang out with you guys. You guys are what make this channel special. You make it different. I don't care about number of subscribers. I don't care about how many views you get. You guys make this channel what it is, the members. If you want to be a part of the family, hit the join button. We would appreciate it. Dakota, Calfee's been a member for seven months. We appreciate that support. Uh, Tony Canada, been a member for two months. Get well soon. Tony, it's good to see you in the chat again tonight. Uh, Tip's been a member for 11 months. Shout out, Tip. We appreciate it, brother. Smokey Vol's been a member for four months. Says four months supporting the GOAT. Support the channel chat. Uh, that's a that's an advertisement. Thank you, Smokey Vols. We appreciate it, brother. Uh, Hot Rod's been a member for 11 months. The X Factor's been a member for 27 months. X Factor's going to be riding down with me, man. He's going to be right there by my side. The wingman. He's my wingman on the air and off the air. Going to be a good time hanging out with you guys. G10, 10 o'clock Saturday. Coach Rice, wrap this dang show up for us. Uh, what are you excited about? Spring camp. What are you looking for in the orange and white game? The floor is yours. Uh, what, I, we're going to see a lot of young offensive of linemen. Uh, Gage Ganther. Um, I wish Bennett Warren was here, but unfortunately he's not. We'll see a lot of Max Anderson, William Sarlacc, Bison Lane. Um, Sham Umarov. That's to be honest. That's what I'm actually most excited to see them going up against this talented, uh, deep, it, impressive defensive line, and see what type of fight they got. Mm-hmm. Are they just going to let the defensive line run over them and you know control things? Because if for people that don't know, it's been like this most of spring camp, where the the offensive line is on their second and third string guys. They're still creating holes from time to time for the Deshaun Bishops and Dylan Sapsons and creating plays. So that makes me a little hype for the future for what after this year, what Tennessee's going to have to be forced to deal with as far as starting five, pretty much five new offense or four new offensive linemen because Hurd will be back. But it's, it's something that is very, you know, prominent for the future that I'm, I'm getting, I'm ready to see. Uh, I think going off of what Coach Jay said, and this to wrap it up, practicing fast. When you're mm-hmm. practicing fast, mm-hmm. you're playing fast. And when they're, what they're doing in practice, we see it in the clips, the few clips we got. We've heard from, you know, Austin Price, who pretty much has is inside Josh Heupel's left pocket everywhere he goes. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's just great to see this team, this uh, culture, this family, and that because that's what it is. They're a family, and they're they're there for each other, playing for each other. Um, they're all playing for the power T. And when when you're having fun, they're having fun out there in practice. You can see it's loose. They're playing, they're practicing fast. And when it comes to this fall fall camp, it's just going to keep going. Summer summer's all about building, you know, team chemistry, uh, getting that extra work in. That um, you know, getting those routes on air with Nico and the wide receivers, putting a little extra feet work with the DBs. It, it's you know, it's just fun to see, and I, I'm I'm glad 
that I'm a Tennessee Vol fan, and I have, thanks to Boogie, the man with the plan, have the opportunity to come on here and share my love with Tennessee Vol fans. I don't know why my camera. Your, your camera that. is it's AI, man. It's gonna yeah, be you one day. Yeah, when you first say. when you first popped in, computer one day. when you first popped in, I pulled you up on the screen. I was like, "What's up?" You didn't have your headphones in. You walked off. It followed you as you were leaving <laughs> the room. Like, I'm like, "What is going on, man?" There he goes. <laughs> it's very AI. But um, but yeah, it's thank thanks to you and the opportunity. Getting to come on here and talk about something we all three love, obviously, and everyone in the chat. I know everyone, this is all the family, and we're freaking just pumped and ready for some Tennessee football. So, there you go. Yeah. No, you I, couple, I love every second of it. A couple more member chaps. Uh, chaps. Chats. MD Vols member for 19 months. Have a great time at the Orange and White game. Wish I could join you. Well, come on out and have a good time, man. I, I'm, I'm afraid. It's like I can't win for losing. Last year would have been epic, and then I, everybody got sick and we didn't get to do it. This year, it's like, all right, we're riding, man. We're going. We're, we're going down, and limited seating. Like, I don't know how many people want to come watch it on, on, a, on a big screen, but that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to come hang out. We're going to drink some beer. Yeah, we're going to drink some ice-cold beer, and then we're going to go watch it on a big screen together. Uh, so come hang out with me and the X Factor. Dauber's going to be in the house. Negaval, Negaval, uh, I hope you bring me – a gift that you owe me from Negaval bought me a gift last year. And I think it's been sitting on his bookshelf ever since I will be there to receive gifts from Negaval says go Vols. Want to see a Nico crossing route touchdown. Negaval has been a member for 18 months. Appreciate that brother. Jenny for five says they need to do what Kirby does and make them believe that people underestimate them. But, uh, but our case they do. Yeah. Everybody do. always, always, always underestimated, always hated we're gonna tie a big fat bow on this one been a fun stream man love getting on here anytime me coach j coach rice get to hang out talk some tennessee football it's always a good time reminder busy week coming up man busy week jalen matthews is going to be in the house on sunday night seven o'clock he's going to recap his visit to rocky top for the orange and white game wednesday night jamal wallace is going to be in the house doing the exact same dang thing guess what talking to a lot of recruits and they want to get on the channel they want to they want to they want to break news on the channel. We'll see what happens. You guys are what make it happen. When you when you when you get in on Twitter and you start tagging these kids and you say get on the Talking Balls network, come hang out with Boogie, Coach J, Coach Rice, Dobber, the X Factor. Uh, you guys make it happen. So I'm grateful you guys. I'm grateful for these two coaches that know way more about football than I could ever pretend to know, but it's always a good time. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I guess Sunday is going to be the next time we gather together. But I'll have videos coming your way talking recruiting, transfer, portal rumors, anything and everything, Tennessee football, all day, every day, right here on the Talking Balls Network. For Coach Jay, for Coach Rice, my name is Boogie Bentley. This is the Talking Balls Network. Go Big Orange. Chaw uh-huh.